my creative process is, you know, I don't know how unique it is, but it really depends on what I'm feeling. Because the idea for me as a producer or anything that I do is to be able to channel what I'm feeling and then turn it into something that people can understand or that I can even understand in a certain sense. Because I'm, I, I'm connected in a certain kind of way universally, I know this. This is Ron Trent, and this is What Do the Stars Say to You, out on Nighttime Stories. I began on this journey to try to, if you will, tune in to a certain aesthetic and certain wavelength that, was, that I was very familiar with, but necessarily I have not been hearing. The concept of warm was placed in my mind, if, if you will, in the early 90s. And uh, the opportunity to create this project came out of, well, not only my study of, of music uh, over the years, or the case may be, uh, but my affinity for kraut rock and my affinity for new age music, uh, jazz, experimental things. And also music and, and its relationship to architecture because this is a form of sonic architecture that I practice. You know, I was able to be in my studio for a long period of time here on the south side of Chicago, Electric Boo, obviously because we were in the, the pandemic, you know, and uh, out of that, you know, there was a, I felt there was a need to have a con connection to, to, to music as a healing mechanism, but to also the idea of being able to be somewhere else. You know, there's a lot of influences. Um, uh, everything from TV shows, certain movies, definitely different styles of music. Most of the time I kind of program my day so that I leave the night open. The night time is very important time to record as Quincy Jones would say it's uh, when the muses come out. Depending on what I'm wanting to do, you know, we kind of denote where I'm going to go. Might be a guitar riff, but most of the time I must say, if I'm going to be honest, it starts with the keys. You know, I come up with keys, chord progressions, and then kind of build it from there and just keep layering. If percussion is needed, then I'll go in and I add live percussion. It depends on where I'm trying to go, you know. And once I get into the flow of whatever that is, I let that just lead me, you know. So it's just kind of a natural, organic process. Originally, the influence was heavy Santana. And uh, I started off with a, a percussion groove. The actual uh, first design of the track came off very, it was quick. You know, started off percussion, keys, and I kind of knew exactly where I wanted to go. And it, it just, it just, just kind of, kind of flowed. I had already done the remix for Corungan, and so then that process was pretty much me sending the tracks, um, some of the stems over to them. And then they went in and did their own version. And then they sent me back more parts. And, uh, yeah, the rest is history. Sphere was 100% strictly, you know, created for John Luc Ponty. This is an iconic figure for me, one of my inspirations. When I first started making the track, it probably took me maybe like 10 minutes to decide. It's like, okay, this is a John Luc Ponty piece, you know. What would John, how would John approach this? As soon as I sent it to John LaPonte, he loved it. It was immediate. You know, it was not, you know, hey, you know, I want you to do it. It was like, yes, immediately. John did a, oh my God, hell of a performance on it. And it's, it's an honor to have him on the project. Psycho Mini is, uh, Crockett and Tubbs in the car. <laughs> in the Miami Vice, brother, that's, a, that's really what it is. It's like that, that soundtrack to put you in the, the move like you're moving through the city or you're watching the city move kind of thing, you know? Kind of an ode in particular to that time, but it puts you in this, the city just pulsing and something's gonna happen, you know? Though it's, it's, it's intense, you know, intense, but warm at the same time. <laughs> a 
one of the collaborations, obviously, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, proud to say that I was able to, to achieve is, is that with the surviving members of Asmuth, uh, Ivan Conti and uh, Alexis uh, Meadows. Asmuth as a group has always been a major inspiration for me. And um, since I was young, I mean, their early recordings on Fantasy Records, the way that they were recorded, uh, the, their approach to music, uh, their ethereal uh, approach, if you will, and you can feel it. And I'm, very, I'm, I'm a person that's very much into being able to translate your feelings into these machines. And then on the other end, coming up with something that's organic. My idea was to be able to get to a level as a producer, or as a musician, to be able to achieve that level of richness. And uh, Asmuth was his, uh, they were a leading force. So actually being able to have them on this album and to have them connecting to the music the way that they did immediately, it lets me know that I'm on the right wavelength. Gigi Messine, who is, I'm a fan of his, who, you know, he's a new age artist from the 80s, and, uh, from Italy. And, um, you know, it was an honor to be able to work with him too. We did at, uh, at Mira. Uh, he sent me a sketch of that, uh, which was very reminiscent of um, John Hassel, and uh, who I'm a big fan of. You know, I immediately, once again, I jumped in to that and I uh, had my own approach and add. That was like one of the only sketches where somebody sent me something and I actually built on top of it. My brother Lars, who is featured on Cool Water as a guitarist, he's doing, his, uh, doing a vocal uh, on the project and uh, he also added uh, part writing to the composition he is an excellent talent. He came out of the electronic field, if you will, out of the 90s and from a group his crew started called Needs. And they're out of Germany. So we started working on some stuff. And I happened to be working on, uh, I created Cool Water. I created the chords, I created the, the you know, the bass line, the, the, the original drums and, and this kind of thing. I was like, hey man, what do you think about collaborating with me on this piece. I'm, I'm working on this, I'm writing it. And so he immediately got it. He was like, okay, yeah, we're gonna do this, you know, we'll do, you know. And he sent me back the guitar track and his, his, his part, the idea came up of, you know, having Ivan Conti on it, drummer from Asthma, you know, Mamu. And I was like, yeah, this would, because it's a very asthma sounding record, you know, to a certain degree. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's, let's do that. Sent it to Ivan. Ivan loved it. Sent me back a gang of drum passes and um, got something that was very uh, beautiful in the end. This album is like a soundtrack album. That's what it is, to be honest with you, because I was creating these pieces to be like parts or like parts of a mini movie. And the stuff is very deliberate too. I'm not gonna sit up and say, oh yeah, I don't know what happens. I, I get knocked out and I just wake up and it's try. No, it is deliberate. It's, a, it's an energy, but you know, uh, once again, I think that when the music is created, you know, it's from you, but it's for everybody. So then it becomes a part of the universal message.